In this video, we're going to talk about a Pokemon history. Let's take a look at the phenomenon that is Pokemon. Where did it come from? What is a Pokestop? What is a Poke Gym? And how is Pokemon evolving? Did you know that Pokemon is already in its seventh generation? Pokemon launched on February 27th, 1996. Yes, it's been around for over 20 years. This was the original screen for the original Pokemon on the handheld Game Boy system from Nintendo. It was black and white, and a fairly simple role-playing game. Pokemon is a role-playing game where you are a trainer looking to catch them all. As you build up your collection of the cute, cuddly creatures, you train them to become stronger and build teams around strengths and weaknesses. What originally began as an elemental system evolved into something weirder and greater. Fire is weak to water, ground is weak to fire, water is weak to electric, poison is weak to psychic, etc. Here you can take a look at the ridiculous strengths and weaknesses of the different types of Pokemon that are available in their current setup. Now, in the current version of the Pokemon Go app, not all of these different types are available, but a majority of them are. Anything where you see a green plus is a strength. So water, which you can see third down on the left, is strong against fire. You can see that as second line to the right. Anything with a red minus is a weakness. Fire is weak to its own powers. Grass is also weak to fire, so is ice. Anywhere you see a black X, those types of Pokemon do zero damage in any attack that is from their type. Now there are ways around this, but we're not really looking to get intricate and deep into how Pokemon work. So, especially when it comes to the Pokemon Go game, a ghost type attack won't even work on a normal type Pokemon. Obviously I could talk about just this screen for quite some time, but if you take a look you can see most of the strengths and weaknesses have a little bit of logic involved. You may love the electric type Pokemon, but a team full of them could be wiped out by a single water type Pokemon. Your team has to be made up of Pokemon of different types to capitalize on strengths and weaknesses of other teams. Most importantly, many Pokemon have two different types. Not only does that make you extra strong against the types of Pokemon they would be strong against, it also gives you extra weaknesses. Pokestops are a place to gather potions, buffs, and heal your team in the original game. They serve a similar purpose in the new Pokemon Go game, but we'll get to that in a bit. Poke gyms are where big battles take place between your trainer and the local gym leader and whatever supporting team they may have there. The goal is to defeat the leader and get a special badge that identifies your awesomeness. This is what a battle looked like in one of the Pokemon games. Your goal in the games is to beat the Pokemon leaders to get to an ultimate battle where you face four different leaders at once on some ridiculously out-of-the-way mountain. Once you do that, you defeat the game, but they do have special things you can do once you do that to build up your team even further. In Pokemon Go, you still gather items you need at Pokestops, and you still battle gym leaders. The physics of the battles in the Pokestops have changed a bit. So now, this is an augmented reality app on our phones where we use our cameras built into our smartphones to bring Pokemon into our world. Pokestops are different. They don't look the same like they did in the game. In the game, it would be a little building your little character would walk into and they would stock up on whatever they needed, heal, and then go back out into the world to move further in the game. Now, Pokestops give you automatic drops of different items when you check into one, and gyms are even more different from the way they performed in the game. So now, when you're going into a battle, you'll see screens similar to this, and you will then fight. And fighting in Pokemon Go is also very different from how it is in the game. Over the last 20 years, there have been numerous sequels and nearly a dozen spin-off games capitalizing on the craze of Pokemon. 
Finally, we have the next evolution of Pokemon in the Pokemon Go game we have on our cell phones. Pokemon Go is ridiculously popular as it slowly rolls out across the world. It already has more active users than Tinder, and it's approaching the point where it has more engagement than Facebook. Now this is a slightly old graphic. As of the time when I'm recording this video, this hadn't been released in Japan yet, where Pokemon are even bigger than they are in the United States. However, you can see that Pokemon Go in 2016 already has more active users than Candy Crush, which is pretty much the uh, most popular game on mobile devices. This was taken one week after Pokemon Go launched, and it's only going to get bigger as time goes on. In the other videos, we'll talk about the business aspects and sides of Pokemon Go, and how you can play the game and get a little bit more familiar with how it works. In this video, we're going to talk about 21 niches where you can make money using Pokemon Go. And I will give a brief overview of how that can be done on each slide. So the first one is restaurants, and we've seen it over and over again in the news all over on the Internet. Basically, these restaurants are doing some really smart things. Uh, the first thing they're doing is dropping lures. Dropping a lure attracts any Pokemon in the area and spawns fresh Pokemon that may not be normally popping up in that area in your location. So it draws the Pokemon in. So what do you think happens as a restaurant owner? Well, it draws in people that want to catch those Pokemon. With the way the app works, it will tell people where Pokemon are that are somewhat close to them. So you could have people that are two, three blocks, even a mile away, and the trainers are still notified that there are certain types of Pokemon that are close to their location, so it will draw them to you. A restaurant is looking for local business, and that's what this kind of customer is. So the next step that many restaurants are doing are rewarding Pokemon trainers for either catching Pokemon in their area or owning a local gym. They will reward that team with a special discount and uh any of those things work really well. Another thing that you can do is, is host a party or something similar or a contest. Those kinds of things will work really well for restaurants. The next couple of businesses all are exactly the same. Lures, contests, and discounts for trainers are the things that these businesses can use. Coffee shops are another example, exactly the same as restaurants. Bars, now catering to a different clientele obviously bars also should follow the exact same process drop a lure give a discount run a contest or hold a party local businesses so there there are other local businesses that can fall into this sort of thing i've seen thrift shops hold special discounts for certain level pokemon trainers um i've seen pet shelters kill it and have all their pets adopted and be completely empty. Uh, one of them charged a $5 fee to take a, a dog for a walk to go with you when you're catching Pokemon. And these are just simple ideas that can be applied. Drivers. Now, that this is a little bit unique. You, you don't want to do the same things that a restaurant owner would do. What drivers are doing are offering specialized Pokemon chasing rides, where they will drive a trainer or a group of trainers around for an hour and take them to notable locations in their area, whatever pokey stops there are and whatever gyms. So in doing that, they charge X amount of dollars and take these people around to catch Pokemon safely while not driving their own car. And it's absolutely brilliant. The only thing you need to do if you are in this situation is make sure that people know you're doing this. You can do that by posting on a uh, Newspaper, local newspaper websites, Craigslist, uh, Kijiji, any other classified ad website that serves your area. Mobile sales. Now I'm going to talk about this much deeper in a later video, but mobile sales are another thing that you can do. So if you have a pokey stop on your street, it would make perfect sense to set up a little location selling lemonade, bags of chips things along those lines to the Pokemon trainers that come by. You have a captive audience. 
It's the same kind of idea of picking a good location for a store, except you're completely mobile. So if no one's coming to a pokey stop in your area, you can go to one a little further. You want to be mobile and able to move. Another idea with this is to build your business into a vehicle. If you can build it into something like a food truck, you'll kill it. Go from one pokey stop to another based upon how busy they are at different times of day. And you can have a full business just selling to Pokemon trainers. All you need is the app to know where the uh, trainers are going to be and then test it out. See which ones perform best at which times and build your schedule around that. Collectibles. So Pokemon was originally a card game. Once it became a video game, that changed things a bit. And then now we have the Pokemon Go augmented reality game. There are collectibles in Pokemon that are worth upwards of thousands upon thousands of dollars. Now, with Pokemon being a huge craze, certain things are going to be more attractive than others. But what I would recommend is taking a look at what is selling for huge amounts of money and then check things like local garage sales, local uh, reseller stores, or Goodwill. Take a look and see what kind of Pokemon stuff you can find and grab as much as you can. T-shirt sellers. Now, uh, I'm, I'm going to say this over and over again as we go through these videos, but you've got to be very conscious of trademarks. If you put a big Pikachu on a t-shirt and Nintendo catches it, I promise you they're going to hit you with a cease and desist. So, one of the things I believe aren't trademarked, again, I'm not a lawyer, so following my advice on legal stuff would be unwise, but a lot of the team names and team logos don't appear to be trademarked, just based upon what I saw looking at the t-shirts and badges and keychains and things like that that are being sold on the internet. So that's a really smart thing that you can put on a t-shirt. Say something different or interesting about your shirt or about the team or whatever and get it out there. Um, one thing I would recommend is taking a look at websites that already sell this kind of stuff and find ideas in other markets that you can apply towards Pokemon. So look at it, nurse t-shirts and, and see what's being said there and see what you can find that would be applicable to Pokemon people. And then target them with ads on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Done for you stuff. And again, we're going to talk about this in detail a little bit later, but anything you can do for a Pokemon trainer that makes their life easier is going to be attractive to them. So an example that I'm going to mention later is to take their phone, put it on a turntable, and hatch their eggs for them. Uh, eggs, especially the 10-kilometer uh, eggs, give highly rare Pokemon and, and valuable ones at high levels. So the best thing you could do is hatch these things, but they expect trainers to walk 10 miles or 10 kilometers to hatch their egg. So a shortcut, or basically a cheat, is to have either a Roomba, which is a uh, vacuum that rolls around on the floor <laughs> and cleans things for you, or a um, turntable uh, that is used to play records. And put the, the phone on that, and have it run at a fairly low speed, and it will walk, I'm just using quotations here, it will walk for you and hatch the egg. Any of these things, uh, uh, selling accounts, level up a trainer to level 20 or 25 with a bunch of good Pokemon, and you can sell that for hundreds of dollars on eBay. SEO services. So if you're doing SEO for local businesses, telling them the exact same things I told you for restaurants and local businesses would be viable. This is kind of an extension on done-for-you service. Help them get set up with Pokemon-related sales strategies, things that they can do using Pokemon to reach that audience and get more business, because that's really what search engine optimization is about, is getting more business. Social media managers, especially if you're local to the businesses or catering to businesses in your area, People don't know what to post to social media to drive leads and drive sales. So as a social media manager, you could offer a Pokemon specific service where you would go to their area once a day, take photos of whatever Pokemon are around the area, and upload it on their behalf to their Facebook fan page, their Twitter account, etc. 
If you're capable of doing that, it's worth a few hundred dollars a month to a local business. Ad managers. So another thing that can be done, considering how targeted Facebook ads have become, you can have someone upload a photo of Pokemon and target Pokemon interested trainers, people that have the app on their phone already, using Facebook. And doing that with a picture of the Pokemon that's in your area, that will drive people to you. All you need to do is make sure you drop an, a uh, an app, <laughs> drop a lure every 30 minutes or so. If you do that, the people that see your ad will come to your location and hopefully buy the products you have for sale. Blogging about Pokemon is becoming very popular very quickly, and it's going to be difficult to break through the noise and, and say something that hasn't been said a hundred times before. So if you're going to blog about Pokemon, pick a specific angle and stick to it. So talk about how to play Pokemon Go for 10-year-olds or how to play Pokemon Go for 50-year-olds. Those are things that will pick a specific audience and speak their language and target them specifically. You can monetize through AdSense or Amazon affiliate products. Content writers are going to be absolutely killing it if they do something called private label rights. If you sell private label rights to your content and no Pokemon, you can make a killing selling packages of 10 to 20 Pokemon articles to people that are interested in the topic. Anyone that writes content, if you know Pokemon, it would be silly not to sell it. YouTube. So the trick with this is that Pokemon Go is on your phone, so it's going to be really difficult for you to record yourself while you're out there wandering around. The trick is that you need a second phone or some type of camera or something similar that can show what is going on on your phone and what is going on around you. If you can do that and upload your adventures to YouTube, you can use AdSense to monetize your videos and build a following there where you can promote products and programs related to Pokemon. Info products. In fact, you're watching one. So putting together a training program on Pokemon would work, obviously. So uh, there's really no long, complex process here teach people how to do something cool in the game, and then sell it. You can use JVZoo, ClickBank. There are dozens of affiliate networks out there on the web. Get your content onto them and take advantage of how hot Pokemon are right now. App creators. Now, if you can do something like build into an API for Pokemon Go, the company that created this app is called Niantic, N-I-A-N-T-I-C. Go to their website, take a look, and see if there's anything you can do to provide extra added help to Pokemon Go players. If you can do that and do it inside an app, people will pay you for it, depending on how much value and how much help you provide to the trainers. So take a look at what is out there already and create something that helps trainers get more done faster. Hackers, uh, I hate to say it, but there are already cheating software tools out there that help you get unlimited items in the game and other stuff. It, just Google search Pokemon Go hacking software, Pokemon Go cheating software, and you'll find what I'm talking about. So if you're a hacker and you can figure out ways to get people free stuff in the game, you can absolutely sell that eBay. So we talked about collectibles before. Selling stuff on eBay related to Pokemon is super easy. Just go to eBay and look at what's already there. If you have any of the things that are selling, put them up and sell them. Etsy is similar to eBay, but the difference is anything that sells there is supposed to be handmade. So if you can 3D print or create badges or buttons or stickers or shirts or any type of wearable, you can use Etsy to sell. And there are thousands of Pokemon Go products up on Etsy already. So take a look at what's there. And if you can create something better than what's already there, it would make sense for you to get on Etsy and do that. Amazon's a little bit different. Uh, you 
in the best circumstances would want them to be able to ship your products to their customers. It's called Fulfilled by Amazon and there are full-blown $5,000 training programs on how to do that. But the short version is you need to have bulk items that you can sell on Amazon. So you need hundreds of them or at least 50, let's say, of every different Pokemon related product you've got. You have to follow a fairly long drawn out process which you can figure out by searching Google and then get your products up on Amazon and selling and they will just simply send you checks. So again, the, the downside of this is you have to have a fair amount of your product to send to Amazon so they can send it with two day free shipping to their Prime members. If you can do that, you will do well on Amazon as long as your product is quality and wanted. In this video, we're going to talk about cashing in on Pokemon Go. When something goes as crazy as this game has, there is a ton of money to be made by those smart enough to get in front of it. Here are a few ways to get in front of it. Done for you services. People are lazy. Those lazy people will be happy to pay you to do the stuff they don't want to do themselves. If you're willing to put in the time, you can get paid handsomely for doing the work. Build up accounts and sell them. First, step one, set up a new Gmail account. You'll need to do this because you're going to have to give that to someone when they buy. Create a new Pokemon Go account, play the game and level up your character while collecting as many Pokemon as you can. Step 4. Sell the account once you reach level 20 or higher by providing your buyer with the Gmail account. All you have to do is give them the email, the password, and don't log into it ever again. Hopefully they're smart enough to change the password on their own, but that's on them, not on you. Simply rinse and repeat and you can sell accounts over and over and over again. They're going from anywhere from a few hundred dollars to a thousand or more if you can catch rare enough Pokemon. Hatch eggs for people. Publicize your services at local gyms, Pokestops, Craigslist, or anywhere else you can. Have people give you their phone. Place their phone on a slow turning record turntable and alternatives to use a Roomba, which is a completely self-aware vacuum so set the Roomba to go or set the record turntable to spin with the phone on top of it you will over time hatch people's eggs for them give back the phone and get paid for the work that you did be a Pokemon driver set up to sign up to drive for Uber or Lyft you'll need a decent vehicle to be able to do this they don't want 1963 VW bugs that are sputtering from one location or another to be driving for them you'll need a fairly recent car plan a one-hour trip that reaches three or four pokey stops and local gyms publicize your services on Craigslist and at local pokey stops and gyms and then get paid for doing what you've done. So let's move on for the done for you stuff to selling Pokemon stuff. Step one, create designs based upon Pokemon teams, gear, and the Pokemon. And as promised in a previous video, avoid trademark terms and graphics. Apply the designs to mugs, badges, t-shirts, stickers, posters, keychains, etc. Can be done using a service like Gearbubble, Cafe Press, and others. Publicize your products at local events, using Facebook ads, or by paying for access to those that have the attention of Pokemon Go players. Step 4. Profit. Content production. Record on video or as text any tricks you learn while playing the game. Post your content on a blog, on YouTube, and social media. You'll want to tie all of these things together using a service like Hootsuite to make it easier and more organized. Last step, use advertising to monetize your content. Attract Pokemon trainers. Now, for this to work, you want to download the app onto your phone, use real money to purchase Pokemon coins, use those coins to buy Pokemon lures and incense, drop lures every 30 to 60 minutes, offer special discounts and prizes to Pokemon trainers, and another option is to have a charging station so trainers can charge their phones while they're buying whatever you've got for sale. Step seven, sell more of your stuff. Want to transform your nearest Pokestop into a cash machine? 
All you have to do is become a concierge and watch sales roll in. What do Pokemon trainers need to charge their phones? Get some Mophie batteries and charge trainers to use them to charge their phones. You'll need to invest a bit to get multiple batteries. Each one can charge two or three phones depending on the size you buy and you'll need a few of them. Don't forget that you'll need to keep your batteries powered up to be able to let people charge their phones so you'll want to recharge them every night while you sleep so they're available the next day. What do Pokemon trainers need? To drink water. Wandering around outside without the comforts of home can leave a trainer thirsty. Grab bottles of water in bulk at your local grocery store, BJ's, Sam's Club, Costco. Get a cooler and fill it with ice and water bottles. Pokemon trainers need to eat. Get snacks like granola bars, small bags of chips, pretzels, or candy bars. Make sure you have somewhere shaded to keep them fresh and sell them to trainers when they visit your Pokestop. Pokemon trainers need to go home. They aren't going to be able to wander around the neighborhood all day and night. They might just have eggs that need to be hatched. Get a used Roomba or a turntable and offer to incubate their eggs for them. You won't have to walk a single step and the eggs will hatch quickly. What do Pokemon trainers need? They need gear. Grab some collectible items with team logos from Etsy or eBay and resell them to traveling trainers. With this one, you want to always contact the creator of a product because if you're buying a large amount of their items they may be willing to offer you a discount. Don't forget that sites like Etsy or eBay charge for the ability to sell on their website so if you contact someone directly you might be able to get a bulk discount and pay them directly to get the products that you want to resell. Be reasonable and you'll create happy customers that will return. Two dollars for a bottle of water is fair but five is ridiculous. You can charge convenience prices, but don't charge too much or your customers won't return and buy what you have for sale. Relationships with Pokemon trainers. If you intend on taking advantage of the Pokemon craze, you're going to need to understand a bit about Pokemon Go. After all, the easiest way to interact with someone is to have common ground and understanding a bit about Pokemon is a great way to start. Lower all the different types of Pokemon. Bug, Dark, Fire, Flying, Ghost, Grass, Dragon, Electric, Fighting, Ground, Ice, Normal, Poison, Psychic, Rock, Steel, Water, and Fairy. The thing to know about this is not only does every Pokemon have a type, most of them have two. Each type comes with different strengths and different weaknesses. Fire is strong against Ice and Grass. Dark is strong against a couple of the others. Electric is strong against water. A lot of it is common sense. However, coming up, I'll show you exactly who's strong against what and who's weak against what, so you can see it for yourself. We talked about strengths and weaknesses in the history video, but here they are again below. You can see the green circle is strong, the purple square is normal, the triangle is weak, and the X means that they can't even hit the other character. Now understand going in that this is based upon the type of attack, not just the type of Pokemon. So if a fighting Pokemon has a normal attack, it should be able to attack a ghost type Pokemon. If it's using a fighting type move, it will not work. Well, and actually as I'm looking at it, normal won't work either. However, if the fighting Pokemon also has a fire attack, that should work one of the reasons that you need to think about how you use the Pokemon that you have on your team. Certain Pokemon are far more common than others. You'll find that trainers freak out over the ones that aren't as easy to find. That's one of the main reasons you want to use lures in a local place of business to attract the Pokemon, which will then attract the trainers. I'll show you a graphic of Pokemon in order of rarity in a moment. You can take a look and see just by their pictures. I'm not going to go through their names and bore you to death. But you can see the common, uncommon, rare. I would recommend saving this graphic for yourself. Because if you get a very rare or an epic Pokemon, that's something worth, worth posting on something like a Facebook page to let people know. Snorlax, who is in the middle of the mythical column, 
is super, super rare. So you would want to be very loud about having that. Tauros, which is the North American region exclusive Pokemon. If you have one near you, again, that's pretty rare. So you want to make sure that it's publicized as much as possible. Once you have a basic idea of what Pokemon are, it would be good to familiarize yourself with how the game works. The goal is to catch as many Pokemon as possible, which will increase your level as a trainer. By increasing the power of the Pokemon, a trainer gains the, the ability to do more in the game. The higher the level of the trainer, the more rare and the stronger Pokemon that trainer will catch. To power up a Pokemon, a trainer wants to catch additional Pokemon of the same type. When that happens, the trainer will send it to the professor and will receive a special candy unique to that Pokemon. Candy and Stardust are required to make Pokemon stronger and level them up, which in turn levels up the trainer. Stardust is something you get in mass amounts when catching Pokemon. The combo of Stardust and Candy are used to not only level up Pokemon, but they can also be used to get a Pokemon to evolve. Pokemon evolve into more powerful variations of what they were when they started. They also happen to look much cooler. Once a trainer hits level 5, they can begin attempting to take over gyms. To take over a gym, the current resident Pokemon will have to be defeated in battle by a Pokemon the trainer has. This is done by swiping to dodge and time the right attacks at the right times. If the trainer wins the battle against the resident Pokemon, it will become the leader and can leave one of his own Pokemon to defend the gym in the trainer's absence. As long as he owns the gym, he gets items anytime he visits. These items are only for the owning trainer, which is why there is fierce competition between trainers over who owns a gym. When building relationships with anyone, it helps to have common interests. Even if you have zero interest in how this game works, the basics we've covered here will help you understand the language the players speak. Now you'll be able to discuss how many awesome Pokemon they caught today. So I thought it would be cool to take a departure from the slideshows and show you some actual internet stuff. And what we're talking about in this video is how to make local money from Pokemon Go. So the, the first thing I want to start with is learning about the game. I've taught you a few things, but you'll want to learn more. And what I'm showing you is the location I recommend going to to learn. Uh, it's IGN.com forward slash wikis forward slash Pokemon dash go. If you do a search for IGN Pokemon Go, you will find this. And it's really detailed. It goes into every little tiny intricacy, everything you could really need to know about the game itself. It will not teach you anything about how to make money with it. However, it will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about the app and game itself. So I recommend this because it's something called a wiki. Wikis are editable by any registered user. That means that it's always going to be up to date. People will update it when they figure out new stuff. So we talked about being a Pokemon concierge, and that's a local business you can set up going to different Poke Stops and Poke Gyms in your area. And I recommend having a membership at a wholesale club. It does not have to be BJ's. It can be Sam's or Costco. Either of them is fine. But this is going to be the least expensive place for you to buy the things that you want to resell to other people. Candy, chips, water, other drinks, they're going to have it much less than you would find at your local Walmart grocery store or Publix or whatever your local grocery store is called. When you buy in bulk, and then you resell, you can make more money because you're paying less for the product itself. So a couple of the things that I recommended you get, one would be a portable cell phone charger. And I just did a search on Amazon and I'm gonna to talk to you about the things that I found. I thought this thing was really slick. It is sponsored, meaning someone's paying for it, but for $20, you can get a, a solar powered cell phone charger. I thought that was really cool. However, the one that I would recommend is this one, Easy ACC Monster 20,000 mAh power bank. That's a large amount of power. This should last you a majority of the day. And you can see that there are four USB ports, so you can let four different people plug in their phones at once. 
and then of course you charge them for the ability to do that that's not something they're going to be able to get just anywhere and you'll know that it was $33 with free shipping if you're an Amazon Prime member they will not so I recommend something like this however an alternative is a full portable power source with USB this $300 beast should do you well it should last you at least a full day of multiple charges for multiple people and then you can charge it up overnight the reason I recommend this is because you can also do some of the other things we have discussed this is a portable turntable so you can plug this into this power source and be ready to rock where you can set people's phones on the turntable while it spins around and you can hatch people's eggs for them charge five to ten dollars per egg and you'll be rolling in bank pretty darn quickly now we're going to be talking about this one more in detail coming up however this is meetup.com and I'm logging in and I'm going to type in Pokemon Go and see what comes up I have not done any research before this so Cape Coral Pokemon meetup two drop game shop meetup so there are gamers in my area and I'm in a, a fairly small suburb of Fort Myers Florida fairly small is 50,000 people but still in your area there are Pokemon Go meetups already and if there aren't build one put one together get a group together and monetize it so monetizing it will be something like this stuff putting together the, some concierge service to go with your meetup group Pokemon gathering expedition or whatever you want to call it so um, use meetup.com to pull together groups of local people that are interested in the kind of stuff you want to do another location to do that is Craigslist uh, this is one way to attract additional attention in addition to a meetup group and if there is any local thing that people would be used to so for instance a local newspaper for my area there really isn't even one there but in Whitewater Wisconsin where I grew up we had a local newspaper called the Whitewater Register that would be somewhere to spend three to five bucks and post a classified ad just make sure that it also goes on their website because people now will use both so there are some things you can do to make some local cash and uh, get out there and meet other Pokemon trainers and sell them stuff decide to make money off of the Pokemon Go craze if it's not local it's going to be online right so I figured we should talk about some of your options so one of your options is a blog and this blog was put up in the last two days you can see that the first post well last week July 20th about uh, let's see today is the 24th so it hasn't been up all that long it might have sat for a day or two before they posted but they're posting at least two or three times a day as many things as they can about Pokemon and their primary and only monetization that I've seen mind you I haven't dug through the website is this right here this is a Google Adsense ad if you don't have an Adsense account it is probably the easiest way to make money on the internet is you just do cool things attract your traffic and when that happens people will click on the ads but let's check out the pokedex shop and see what happens so it's pokemongoglobal.com and here's the other way they're making money they have t-shirts with pokemon stuff i'm assuming these are generally amazon affiliate products because there's no way that they built something like this in such a small time frame so um, that is an alternative way to make money so if you're looking where uh, about where these things are coming from where, where they're going to okay this is another ad format so if you want to see where the ad comes from generally you can see from the link that will show up in the bottom of your browser if you look at the bottom of mine you can see how life works in this circumstance that's not the case this is not going to show you what they're using for advertising the tracking is 
at the end of the link. And if you look at the end of the link, you can see just a ridiculous setup. So it's going to be very difficult to track. So if we add this to cart, this actually appears to be an internal shopping cart. This is done by content.add. So there's another option for monetization for you. However, when I clicked on, or when I hovered over this, you could see it's at doubleclick.net. When I put doubleclick.net into my browser, it brought up this website, which is an AdWords company. So again, it's Google AdSense. I knew that, but wanted to show you my uh, how my my idea works. You can see double click by Google. It was a company that Google bought. So putting up blog content is a great way to attract people and attract attention. So another way is to set up a Pokemon forum. Now understand that there are going to be at least a few dozen people trying to do the exact same thing. This website is monetized strictly through Google AdSense and it uses a simple forum script with a simple theme. Uh, generally most forums are run on a software called vBulletin. It's not cheap but it does work. It's a very nice software. I've used it in the past and been very happy with it. And it allows you to monetize with things like Google AdSense. So if we look around, let's go into general discussion and see if there are any other monetization options that come out screaming at us. Okay, so this is officially the worst hosting on the internet. Gotta love internet speak. People forget how to spell. Okay, so the only monetization I see is one single AdSense ad. So not, not oh, two. Not the, uh, the, the best advertising I've seen, but it's something they're probably making a few dollars a day. So now we had talked about content creation for the purpose of selling, and one of the places you can do something like that is the Warrior Special Offer Forum, if you are a member of the Warrior Forum. If you're interested in internet marketing, I would recommend ignoring most of the things you read and hear here. But 10 years ago, this was where I got started, which was, which led to me selling in the Warrior Special Offer Forum and then becoming famous in my own right as time went on. So um, if you have content that you can create quickly, whether it's video or written, you can sell it in the Warrior Special Offer Forum. You would use an affiliate network called Warrior Plus or there's another one called JB Zoo. My choice between the two is JB Zoo. They just seem to have better features, but to each their own. So if you like doing video content, you want to use YouTube. It's the boss. It is, it is the big website when it comes to video. But uh, you need to get a couple of videos up and apply for YouTube's partner program. Because what you want are these the ads that show up in the front of your videos, they will make you money. Uh, potentially, depending on how much traffic you're getting, it could be hundreds of dollars in a very short period of time. Considering how hot Pokemon Go is right now, if you choose the right keyword terms to target and create good stuff, the odds of it going viral are very high. We're going to talk more about viral marketing later, but this is the number one video that isn't by Nintendo and you can see 1.6 million views. So th this video is doing very well for its owner. Who knows how much money they've made, but I can promise you it, it's probably a very solid paycheck. So now let's talk about getting ideas. Understanding what you're going to sell is important, but going out there and actually selling it is more important. So to get the ideas to guide you towards being able to sell stuff, Websites like this are going to help you. Now, these 10 Pokemon Go buttons for $5, they're probably not going to be anything to write home about. However, they cost them maybe two to three cents, so they're making a profit. And then you can turn and sell them for $2 each and make some money on your own, or a dollar each and double your money. It's completely up to you. Look through Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. 
and see what you can find. You might be able to find some things that you could resell. Etsy.com will probably be a far better source for ideas for you. For instance, I didn't even consider bags and purchase purses when I was uh, creating the slides for you and, and doing my research so I could show you things you can do. Bags and purses is a great idea. Uh, my sister loves Pokemon. She would totally buy a Pokemon purse if someone put it in front of her. But that's going to be the key with this stuff, getting in front of the right people. So on Facebook, you can target ads to people that have the Pokemon Go app on their phone. If you set a budget of maybe $5 a day, put up a nice picture of whatever you're selling, and link directly to the ability to buy it, you should make a profit. Obviously, there are no guarantees when it comes to advertising. However, it's worth a shot. It's worth a try. Another possible opportunity is eBay.com. It's not going to be quite as good as Etsy. Etsy seems to attract a very creative audience. eBay is the home of uh, a lot of people that just want to sell stuff. So Etsy attracts more of an artsy, creative crowd, and I found that for idea generation, Etsy blows eBay out of the water. So you'll see a lot of these uh, wristbands, Pokemon Go wristbands. However, if you really keep looking, this is brilliant. The, this clock here is awesome. It's done on a record, I believe, but it's just really cool looking. I mean, $40 for that, I'd pay that in a heartbeat. So look through. You can see there are t-shirts. comes with a free sticker. You can get ideas. So get your ideas on eBay and Etsy. Uh, Fiverr, maybe a few. But if you wanted or had something you could do, like drawing someone with their Pokemon, that's viable. You could totally sell on Fiverr. So those are some options to make some money using Pokemon Go with the internet. When it comes to Pokemon Go, one of the best ways to make money is to do it with video. But what do you do when you want to show someone something on the device that you usually use to record yourself? Well, you've got to get an external camera. But before we talk about that, I want to share some of my tips and tricks to recording good video. The primary thing is that you've got to be comfortable in front of the camera. If you can't pull that off, you have no business doing videos that feature you in them. You really need to sh be free. Be free to show your personality, who you are, and really know what you're talking about. If you're just reading from a presentation of some sort and your face is on camera, that is the single worst thing you could do. It's bad and people will react really negatively to the videos that you produce. So keep that in mind. Another trick that I generally do is if I'm using my phone as a camera or an external camera of some sort, you need something to hold it up. So that's why selfie sticks are so popular because they don't show in your picture and it's not always obvious that you're holding a camera up somewhere. If you're going to be walking around, you're going to need somewhere to put the camera, whether it's held by another person or something like a selfie stick. Think about that and go into it knowing that you're going to need something like that. If you're just recording yourself while you walk around, it would be worthwhile looking for something called a monopod. It's like a tripod, but with one leg. If you're holding it with your hand and recording yourself, you need a monopod. So. I just looked up portable video camera on Amazon, and there are plenty of viable options. Flip Ultra HD was uh, an old camera I used to use, but they aren't for sale anymore, so they're ridiculously expensive. I believe this one was $150 before they stopped making them. You don't need a spy camera or any of that freaky weird stuff, but something like this could work really well for you. The key is that you need to make sure that it's capable of HD recording. You need high quality video. You're recording something on the tiny screen of your phone and possibly with your face next to it. You don't need a $3,000 camcorder to do that. You just need to make sure that it's HD quality and that it has some form of storage that you can use or is able to be plugged into a computer. So another thing, if you really want to go high end, a GoPro is probably the best thing you could possibly get. These are designed, these are the things that you see on, on big helmets when people are doing daredevil things and jumping out of planes. 
a GoPro is what they use. So this is probably the highest end thing you could buy to record video. If you're just doing it yourself, something like this will work just fine. Let's look for monopod and see what we get. See, this is, I believe, this is the one that I have. So uh, it works just fine. You can see it's got a little nub on the end to kind of uh, hold it in place. So once you get your videos done, you're going to put them up on YouTube generally. So when you get them up on YouTube, the way you monetize those is by using something called AdSense. It's made by Google. I've mentioned it in other videos. If you research or do a Google search for Google AdSense, you'll find exactly what you need to sign up for. However, if you're creating videos, every video website, in fact, any website you can put content onto, has an internal search engine as well. So I would recommend taking your videos and putting them up on as many video hosting websites as you can. Dailymotion, Meta Cafe, Vimeo.com, all of these are viable alternatives to YouTube. So go ahead and get it up there and get your videos up in multiple locations because the worst thing that happens is you get a few extra views. Google will choose one and rank it in their search engine. However, you're still in the internal search engine. So with something like Pokemon Go, being up on Vimeo just makes sense. So if we look on Vimeo, there are 593 results on Pokemon Go. If we look on YouTube, there are 16 million. So I'd much rather compete with 593 options than 16 million. So if you post all your content on one of these websites, the odds of you becoming the go-to guy on that website for that topic are way higher than YouTube. So keep that in mind. Now this isn't necessarily video, but these tend to rank really well in Google. SlideShare is somewhere to put up slideshows. So if you're using a slideshow to create a video, excuse me, a, a slideshow, you can put it on SlideShare. So there's already 1.8 million results. Your slideshow better be pretty good. I actually am friends with this guy. But uh, <laughs> anyway, slideshare is somewhere that you can use to get to the top of Google without a lot of work. So where is the, your video going to go? I, I wouldn't drive traffic just to YouTube or Vimeo or Dailymotion. You want to set up a blog of your own. And you can set up a, something on Blogger. Another one is WordPress.com, but what I would recommend is privately hosted WordPress.org, which is the same software from WordPress.com. But what you want to do is you download this and you want it installed on a web host. And if you're going to get hosting, I actually did a bunch of research lately and found this host. Now, they try to sell you something every day, pretty much, and the uh, process to sign up. I paid for a year, it was like $25. I ignored all their upsells and everything else because I don't need it. And I'm going to be setting up a website on their host. I cannot vouch for how amazing they are. They claim to be very quick. They claim to be built to use WordPress. So I would recommend them just based on the research that I've done so far. I haven't had any bad things happen, so it's worth a thought. It's worth a look. Um, and that's how you can make money with Pokemon Go using video. Pokemon events or parties will be a way for you to draw attention to either your business or to the party itself where you can of course make money selling stuff. So the first thing you want to do if you're going to put on an event is plan it all out. I put this together in a period of 10 to 15 minutes just typing out random things. Obviously they're not based on fact. However, I did try to be as accurate as I could with most of the stuff. So if you look under timeline, it's a two hour party. You'll want to do at least that long. You may want to start at like a 5 p.m. or do it on the weekend and an afternoon. So what you want to do is be somewhere where you can drop a lure. So if you're hosting the party in your location, that would be your location. 
If you don't have a location, you can do it somewhere public. It doesn't need to be super organized. Any old park should do just fine. The one thing you'll want to do with a park is contact them and see if you can arrange to have a private party there. Because if you can do that, then you won't have to worry about there being a small army of people under the one shaded location at your local park. So the first thing, of course, you're going to do when the party starts is drop a lure. You may need to spend a whopping $10 to cover the amount of time that the party's going to run. Then you want to hold contests, and we'll talk about where you're going to get the prizes in a moment. Uh, first, uh, I thought it'd be cool to run a catch contest. So whoever caught the, the rarest or highest level Pokemon, you can set up the parameters, but I thought it'd be cool to do that. And then maybe if there's a gym that's fairly close, have a battle contest. Have them fight it out to see who ends up with the gym at whatever time. Whoever has it at that exact time will get a prize for having it. So the next setup I've got is why. Why attend? So I covered who, why, where, and when. The how is kind of obvious. They're going to come to catch Pokemon. So um, who, Pokemon, trainers, why, catch Pokemon, where, the park, and then the date. So you need to understand that going in. Look at your schedule. Figure out when people are going to be available. One of the worst things you could do is schedule something like this over a holiday weekend on a holiday. You can do it over a holiday weekend, but you're running a huge risk that people are going to be somewhere else with their families and not available to attend your party. Uh, next, you want to put together a shopping list, and these are going to be things that you're going to sell for money. So if you want to have hot dogs there, you've got to kind of think around how are you going to heat them up? How are you going to keep them warm and not disgusting and covered with flies? So you want to go in and really plan out what you're going to do for money. Uh, let's take a look at the to sell category. I'm going to move that. Well, I want to move that over. There we go. So we have food and drink. All of these things will be for sale. And as I referred in a, in a previous video, you don't want to uh, have ridiculous prices on these things. Have them be reasonable. Your cost on a hot dog is maybe a dollar. So sell them for two. Uh, team badges. Uh, you can order these things in bulk on Etsy and eBay. Team t-shirts, goodie bags of keychains and things like that. You should be looking on Etsy and find people that will 3D print things you need. Maybe you can even get something unique that people can't get anywhere else. As mentioned in a previous video, you want to reach out to these people directly if you're buying more than two or three of an item so you can get better pricing. Etsy, eBay, all those sites charge to sell on them. So if you contact the seller and offer to buy elsewhere or buy more than they have for sale on any of their listings, that's going to do well for you because if they're not paying the fees to the website, they can discount your price by at least that amount. And then possible sponsors, I just pulled out of my behind, Walmart, Target, Kohl's, none of them are going to sponsor a party you're putting on. What you want to do is figure out which local businesses are Pokemon friendly and see the value in being involved in Pokemon Go type events. If you can come up with a couple, generally, they will give you prizes that you can then use for your contests. It's a much better idea to have businesses donate prizes than it is for you to have to go to the business and buy something like a gift certificate. Normally, these things will give you prizes you can give away to your people attending your party or your event. So an alternative is to do a social media contest. So. Uh, I actually didn't pull that one up. What you want to do is use an app to run a giveaway. You can do the exact same things we just talked about. Now, you can't drop a lure on the internet. It doesn't work that way. But you can get sponsors for your event, or you can buy the prizes yourself. Now that can get expensive, but with an internet-based contest, it's almost mandatory because not many companies will see the value in donating to what you're doing. For instance, Nintendo is not going to give you a, a Pokemon goodie bag that you can uh, give to people. However, the difference is when you're online, you can do something called building an email list, which gives you people a way to contact people that um, and sell them more stuff related to Pokemon. You would need to sign up for the $39 a month version 
but once you're done with your contest, you can cancel. So the cost really is negligible in the end as long as you don't stay a member when you're not running your contest. Now, if you do this right and it's profitable, you may want to keep it and just continue running contests. You can build a very large email list very quickly using something like this. So uh, the free version, if you want to do an online contest, really isn't very viable. You kind of need the pro version where you get email and social data. So um, this is good if you were doing a local contest, but if it's internet based, you need the email addresses to be able to make money. So once you're ready to do your event, here's where you do it. Now, if you're doing it online, you would want to use something like Google Hangouts where you could have Pokemon experts from all over the world come in and talk and teach cool stuff. But for that, you want to be using Gleam.io. The reason I recommend this is because I've seen it used over and over again in many different locations. But our primary focus for this video is not going to be online contests. They're pretty darn easy to run as long as you have access to your audience. If you're willing to run Facebook ads and invest a little money into your contest to build that email list and then make money off of them later, um, that's really all you need to do. They make it really easy to target people interested in specific things like Pokemon Go. So for local, you want to use meetup.com. The reason for that is that um, if your first party is profitable, you're going to want to do it over and over again. So if you can do it monthly, where you can get these sponsors to give you gifts for your attendees, it's just going to grow and get bigger and bigger. And if you're giving stuff away, people are going to want to be there, even in a little town like mine, Cape Coral, Florida. So um, you would have to join, log in, create a new group, and then Meetup will make it easy for their members to find you. Uh, if I put in Pokemon Go, there are two Meetups within 50 miles of where I'm at. There are Pokemon, oh, one of them disappeared. So there were 10 members. It looks like they went in and canceled it since I last looked. But there are 137 gamers in the area that are members of Two Drop Game Shop Meetup. And uh, I don't even, okay, so it's in Fort Myers. They've been around for a couple years. You may want to do your first party with an established group. Reach out to the group owner and let them know that you'd love to do this and see if they'd like to do it. So for this, they're doing the Pokemon card game. Uh, I'm not seeing Pokemon Go here. If you're willing to organize it, odds are they would be willing to take part. So once you have your event figured out, you need to publicize it. So reach out to your local news stations and let them know that you're having a Pokemon Go party. So they may not even respond, but it's worth it to look for the contact page and let them know you're doing something. So it's news, story idea, and then fill this in. Now this is my local news. You would want to look up yours. Your local newspaper is another thing you should consider putting your party up on. Running a classified ad or uh, putting one up on their website. Those kind of things are worth doing. Another thing worth doing is using Craigslist. So you can see in community there are events. And if you post your events, you can see there aren't a huge amount of options. And there's well over 100,000 people in Fort Myers, Florida. So um, if someone's interested in what you've got going on, and uh, Pokemon is gamer geek heaven. So one of the things most people don't know or don't talk about is that Craigslist is HTML friendly. So if you look in here, you can see, okay, so they put images in the ad, but that's not HTML. Your entire ad can be an image. And that, that's kind of my secret to get noticed on Craigslist. Put together a large graphic that covers who, what, when, where, and why. And then post the graphic as your ad. You can Google image HTML, and it'll give you the code that you need to make it look nice and uh, stand out. Put in the location. So they have their little map built in, and uh, this will get you people that are interested in what you're doing. Last but not least, uh, another idea to find businesses for sponsors. So for me, Fort Myers is okay, Cape Coral would be better, but um, their website is horrible and takes forever to load. But the Chamber of Commerce, the local Chamber of Commerce will have 
a business directory available to you. So you can put in your keywords or just click something like all categories and look through the businesses that come up. If they're a member of their chamber of commerce, odds are they understand the value in advertising and new business. So look for things like beauty and fitness. Um, depending on what you're doing, obviously not Pokemon stuff, but office supplies or toys or think about what Pokemon trainers are going to be interested in. And uh, look at your local chamber of commerce. You'll get plenty of ideas of businesses you might not even know exist. So that's how to run an event. Uh, they can be very fun. They're also very high stress. So go in with a plan and rock out your party. Have uh, help there. Be awesome and have fun. In this video, we're going to talk a bit about viral marketing. And uh, the, the thing about viral marketing is there is no exact science. Now, we're going to go through one of my favorite posts about viral marketing, and I'm going to talk about each of the eight things that they recommend you do to ensure you go viral. However, I wanted to take a quick second. I know I just talked about contests, but using something like Gleam.io to run an internet-based contest, if you want to go viral and generate viral traffic, this is the best way to motivate someone to spread around what you've got to say. So keep that in mind. Get some prizes together. Bribe people with them and get them to share your contest and build your business for you. So with that being said, let's take a look at viral content and what's truly gone viral. This has 300 million views, I'm estimating, of course, uh, 94,000 YouTube subscribers, and who knows how much money this lucky, smart man has made from this video itself. I'm guessing it's a lot. This was the top viewed video on YouTube years ago, and it's still being viewed today. I don't know how much, but I promise you it's being viewed quite a bit. So, what this gentleman does is go through dance trends from the 50s through now. And uh, it's a really good video. Uh, look up the history of dance or evolution of dance on Google and you can find it. What he did was, he did something different, unique, and awesome. And that's kind of what most viral content achieves. The Chewbacca mask lady is another one who just dominated the internet for a short period of time. She utilized her 15 minutes of fame quite a bit. In 24 hours, over 50 million people watched the video. In fact, I watched it two or three times. And this is just the BuzzFeed version. Three million views. This was her uh, getting some rewards. 34 million views of Kohl's giving her a bunch of free Star Wars gear. So on YouTube, let's pop this open and see. On YouTube, it has 7.2 million views. And this is not the Chewbacca lady. He just took her video and put it up on YouTube. That's it. 7 million views. That's ridiculous. 75,000 likes. This isn't even his video. So these things went viral. What can you do to replicate what they did for themselves? Step one is know your audience. If you know who you're targeting, you should understand what drives them, what their interests are. So when it comes to Pokemon Go, it's going to be crazy stuff. Uh, an example is there was a gentleman who ran, walked into the middle of a very large group with many people trying to catch Pokemon and screamed at the top of his lungs that he found a Dragonite, which is a fairly rare Pokemon. And he got mobbed. Now, it's not viral in the sense that it's had 80 million views in a day. It's viral in the sense that anyone interested in Pokemon is spreading it around like crazy. Viral doesn't necessarily mean you want to reach every single person on the internet. That's not necessarily a good thing. Depending on what you have set up, reaching everybody isn't going to necessarily do anything for you. You aren't probably going to make any money off of that. What you want to do is reach your people, so understand who you're targeting. Make an emotional connection. 
So the, this graphic goes over a little bit of that. If you can get into the middle, that's, that's where things get interesting. So grief, loathing, rage, vigilance. I don't try to avoid all of these and try to stick more to the ecstasy, admiration, not terror, and amazement. Um, amazement tends to go viral more than others. Uh, if you can put in a little bit of surprise and distraction, the odds of you getting more of your audience to pay attention, the better. Build sharing into the campaign. Integrate user-generated content. That's not easy to do if you don't have access to an audience. So the straight out of Compton meme generator is actually a really good example. I saw these everywhere. People share useful content, but they also share what's awesome. So 670,000 shares is great, but who's looking? Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it being super useful. I would focus on entertainment with this audience. Great timing helps. So again, on the Pokemon Go stuff, we are dead on it. Uh, I believe this is the first training program based around it, and you got it. So it's time to uh, start doing something. Start thinking about how you can get in front of Pokemon trainers right now. The easiest and fastest way is going to be through Facebook ads. Get visual. Yes, uh, a video and images and those kind of things that will help. And then get your content in front of influencers. And this is really important you're not going to target digital marketing influencers, so this kind of thing isn't all that useful. But what you do want to target are Pokemon trainers. So if what I would consider is how you hashtag your content when you post it to social media. Hashtagging on pretty much every social media website is a discovery tool. So obviously you want to use Pokemon Go, but you want to think and maybe even look at what other hashtags are being used so you can kind of hijack some of that traffic that other people are using when hashtagging Pokemon stuff. So what I would do is let's pop open Twitter and then we're gonna look up hashtag Pokemon. Hashtag Pokemon. So we can now look at C and see at these different things that are being tagged. So look at what people are tagging. And that's where I'm going to leave you. Uh, the, the secret to viral marketing is to know your audience and create something so awesome that they'll share it to everybody else in your audience. That's it. So don't complicate it and uh, get your content out there. You're gonna have hits, you're gonna have misses, but if you Go through some of the, the guidance that we've gone through in this video. You will get much closer to viral every time you try.